So last class we did uh, nucleophilic substitution reaction mechanisms for halogenoalkanes. SN2 and SN1. SN2 was for SN2 was the one step reaction mechanism and SN1 was the two step reaction mechanism. SN1 was with uh, mainly with so basically for your exam you got to remember that if you have a primary halogenoalkane that will undergo SN2 reaction. So primary Haloalkanes, halogenoalkanes, के लिए SN2 है, and tertiary halogenoalkanes के लिए halogeno, halogeno alkanes go through SN1, and secondary halogenoalkanes do a mixture of both. Some of the secondary halogenoalkanes will undergo SN2, some will undergo SN1, and that's how it is. So for the exam, the SN1 mechan, SN2 mechanism, which is basically the Transition state five bond uh, complex five five bond activated complex that was SN two and SN one three bond uh, carb carbocation intermediate. Draw the energy profile diagrams for both of these as a sketch. The SN two sketch looks something like this. I'm just drawing a very small one. The SN two is a one step reaction. And it is where here do you find the transition state or the activated complex? Transition state is the guy at the bilkul top. Okay. And for the SN1 mechanism, the energy profile diagram was a two-step reaction. Uh, one and two. And this is where your carbocation was. The three-bond carbocation. Hence, this is two-step and uh, SN1, this is SN2, one step. That's just reminding you guys what it was. That's what we did last class. One complex would look like, that's important to also be able to draw. So when you're drawing that, remember the five bond complex was with, uh, let's say R, and the halogen was here. The, actually that's a dotted line, X, and the bond with, what you wanna call it? OH, let's say OH, and you had an H here and an H here. This would be with a primary halogenoalkane. This would be the five bond complex you would have, activated complex, that would form at this state. And the carbocation was and was when you had a, a three alkyl groups. Hence, that would be a tertiary halogenoalkane. Okay? And the angles in the carbocation were 120 because I was taking a planar. And the angles in um, the five bond complex, activated complex is uh, 90 and 120 because this was an activated complex. Uh, and the shape is trigonal bipyramidal. And this was the intermediate here, the three bond structure. That's the main difference between SN2 and SN1. One step, two step, transition state. Carbocation, the transition state is a five bond guy where this bond is being formed simultaneously to this bond being broken. While in this case, the CAX bond is broken first to get X minus and this carbocation and then the OH comes in and that's your intermediate. So if I were to draw that, the OH would come in now and attack this because now the anion is broken away as X minus and now the OH will come into play. After this, we did the reactions, the nucleophilic substitution reactions of halogenoalkanes. Now, let's take, for example, uh, bromopropane, CH3, CH2, CH2, Br. And we could replace the Br with uh, OH. That was the first nucleophile we saw, OH minus, and it would give off Br minus separately. And basically, you needed NaOH aqueous and heat under reflux, heat under reflux. This reaction was also called hydrolysis. And the reason why it's called hydrolysis is because the Br is being replaced by an OH, you're reacting this with an alkali. Hydrolysis is basically reactions with water, but it's catalyzed by an acid or an alkali. Here, we need an alkali to hydrolyze Br with an OH. 
You can also hydrolyze Br with OH by just using plain water, but that reaction is, is extremely slow. So that's why we use NaOH. And this reaction with water, so you could say that a substitution reaction using water, acid or alkali as a catalyst, is called hydrolysis. Now there's another hydrolysis reaction that will be coming up because uh, when you add the second electrophile, CN minus, uskili you needed NaCN dissolved in ethanol. And that's why we use ethanol because we don't use uh, water here. Because if I use NaCN in water, then the water would hydrolyze Br with an OH. And if I don't, if I wanted OH, I would have used this. So if I want to put CN in place of a Br, I use NaCN. But if I only want CN, then I don't use water. That's why we use NaCN and ethanol and heat under reflux. We did this also last class. And what happened was that you actually added, this is a very, very important reaction because you're extending the carbon chain by one carbon. And so you get a four carbon. From a three carbon compound, you get a four carbon CN. Now, the names will not be in your syllabus for CNs. This one, by the way, you should be able to name. This is bromo, one bromo, propane, and this is propen one all. So those names are important, but not the name for one bromo, propane is becoming propen one all. And if it was two bromo propane, it will become propen two all. This one is actually butane nitrile, but we don't care about the name. We care about the fact that we have an extra C now. And this extra C can be made into a carboxylic acid. And for that, we need CH3, uh, CH2, CH2. We will make C into a carboxylic acid. And for that, we need dilute HCl or dilute H2SO4 and heat under reflux. Heat under reflux. And these were the reactions we had done for nucleophilic substitution for halogenoalkanes in the last class. This reaction is nucleophilic substitution. The reaction mechanism for this is nucleophilic substitution. The reaction mechanism for this is also nucleophilic substitution. The CN does exactly, exactly to this what the OH did. So if OH with the, this is a primary halogenoalkane. So OH with primary halogenoalkane would undergo SN2 reaction with the activated complex. The CN minus would exactly do the same thing with this guy also. And that would be, the mechanism will be nucleophilic substitution. And this is hydrolysis when you replace a Br with an OH. Here, this is also nucleophilic substitution. And the CN to CWH, this guy is hydrolysis. Because again, I'm reacting the, with, with water. I am replacing or substituting the N with uh, atoms from water. And it was it was catalyzed by either acids or alkalis. Alkalis be react with this. And what's the reaction? Kya hota? And that's the next thing, that's new stuff now. Is if I had used NaOH aqueous and heat under reflux for this hydrolysis, I would get the acid, but the acid formed would be neutralized by the NaOH in excess because every reagent will be in excess. So the acid will be neutralized by the alkali and made into a salt. A salt of a carboxylic acid is CWO minus cation. But since I like my ionic equations, I don't write cation. So my answer here would be that the CH3, CH2, CH2, CN, the N is knocked off, the C becomes CWOH, but because it's an alkali, it becomes CWO minus. So CH3, CH2, CO2 minus. So if I use an acid on CN, I'll get the carboxylic acid. If I use an alkali, I'll get the salt. That's a little difference. Chemically, organically, both are the same. Think for me, they're both acids, but this is an acid, this is the salt of the acid. I can make this into an acid, but for me, this is what I add an NaOH on CN, I'll get a salt of the acid. Understand that this, these two reactions are basically an overall hydrolysis reaction. And general hydrolysis would be CO2H, sorry, CH3, CH3, CN, plus two water molecules, two H2Os, that's the overall reaction. And the CH3, CH2, CH2, CN becomes CO2H, and the N became NH3+. This would be what hydrolysis is. Hydrolysis would be reacting with water. And so with water, CN makes acid and ammonia. And I've given this, by the way, in your slides on page number 253, slides 29 and 30 in your notes. So this equation is the overall reaction. That's one slide 29. The CN gets replaced by CWH. But if I use an acid, then the extra H plus converts NH3 to NH4 plus. And if I use an alkali, 
the OH minus neutralizes this to give off H plus ions. So that's why the equation is slightly different if I use an acid or an alkali. For an acid, I've got to put an extra. So I've got to have the same molecules. And I'm drawing it, don't worry, I'm writing it down. Plus, you got two water molecules and an extra H plus. And the reason why you have the extra H plus is so that you that extra H, H plus is gained by ammonia that is made, the inorganic byproduct. Because honestly, when we start doing organic chemistry, we will never really worry about the inorganic byproduct. They'll all they'll completely ask you to write the organic compound. So, and then if I use any which, the difference is that instead of using two waters, I will use one water and one OH minus ion. Because I don't I don't need that many uh, H's. I need actually one less H. Because I there is the acid will lose the H. So I need one less H from just the normal reaction. Because this extra H was converting ammonia to ammonium. Alkalis won't do that. So I'm comparing the alkali to the main reaction that is pure hydrolysis, the OH is needed and not, not the X second water molecule because the second water molecule was giving an H to the acid. Now I'm going to remove this H because in alkalis may you, you won't find the H. So I'll have the salt of the acid for left and an ammonia formed. So understand that this is the most important reaction we remember. The CN becoming acid and ammonia. But if it's an acid, but if I use acid for the reaction, then ammonia becomes ammonia. If I use alkali for the reaction, then the acid becomes a salt. That's the difference. So that's what, what's going on here. This is both the slide 29 and slide 30. Mm, this is the hydrolysis of nitrile to give acid, to give acid. Salt of the acid is considered organically the acid. So it's, it's almost effectively the same thing happening in both cases. So now let's try some of the questions from halogenoalkanes worksheet number two. All right. So turn to question number four in Halogeno Alkins worksheet two. Let's look at this question. Let's let's solve this together now. Okay. So in this question, we'll be using, uh, we'll be discussing a bromoethane undergoing a reaction to replace Br. If you look at the whole reaction, in this case, Br is being replaced by a Cn. So when you attempt a question, look at the whole molecules first. So in reaction number one, the Br is replacing a Cn. In reaction number two, the Cn is becoming CWH. And reaction number three, we haven't done yet. It should not be here, but the whole question is so beautiful. And this small part we'll be doing later in the next chapter. This is reduction. And uh, this is a reducing agent. So for later, not for now, because in the next chapter we'll be doing this. LiEH4 is a very good reducing agent. So that'll come in handy in solving a part. But other than that, everything else is something that we've done. Look at reaction number four to go from bromoalkane to an alcohol from bromoalkane to an alkene, we've done all these reactions. Like for example, Br with Cn is NaCn ethanol heat in a reflux, Cn to CWH is, you know what it is. So let's let's write them all down. I'm sh and even, even we, can dis we can actually answer the question more than what they've asked for. Now, let's say for example, reaction number one, Kili, what do you need? You need to replace Br with Cn. So you need Na, oh, sorry, NaCn dissolved in ethanol and heat in a reflux. Now, if they ask you for conditions and reagents, that's what you write. NaC and ethanol, heat under reflux. The type of reaction is nucleophilic substitution. Okay, if that's what they're asking. Reaction number two is CN to CWH. If the type is hydrolysis. The type is hydrolysis. And uh, the conditions for that would be dilute HCl and heat under reflux. That's what we just did, by the way. Now, and if you look at reaction number four and reaction number five, reaction number four may you got to use Br with an, you got to replace Br with an OH. So what do you need here? You need NaOH aqueous and conditions would be heat under reflux. Uh, reaction number five would be removal of a Br uh, and uh, in H and that would be elimination to make a double bond. So the type of reaction is elimination. And what do you need to, to carry out elimination in this case? You need NaOH put in a different solvent, NaOH in ethanol. And the conditions will be heat under reflux. All right. And the type of reaction in this case is elimination. And reaction number four, by the way, replacing the Br with OH is also nucleophilic substitution. So that's what you've ordered. I mean, we've filled up the whole table here with all the types of reactions. Reaction number three 
if you're reducing if you if you're using a reducing agent then reaction number three would be reduction all right so we've answered even more than probably what they've asked for but this is a good nice pathway to discuss now they're saying complete the diagram to show the mechanism of reaction number one all the necessary charges partial charges lone pairs and curly arrows have to be shown in the mechanism now if you notice they have given the reactant and the final product and the reactant is a primary halogen alkane which means this is a one step reaction because this is sn1 so they have not given any space for the transition state and that's fine because if they don't give you any space you don't draw it but if they had let this be open then you would be drawing a completely uh, the, the the one step but with a transition state in the middle so here we'll we'll try to break we'll try to add the cn and break the br at the same time they want charges partial charges and or the ion charges and all so let's start with the first molecule and i'm going to zoom in now because this is nice to look at the whole thing right now like this focus on the mechanism here now for that the first thing you realize is that this bond is polar so you got to show that also for the exam so you got to show c being negative and carbon being positive then this fellow okay lone pair the khane because it's the lone pair that reacts with the carbon so the lone pair here would be on the night carbon because that's the one that's reacting that's the necessary relevant known pair that is needed now it won't attack this way because this would be from the side the br is in i'm going to make it go this way with the curly arrow so i'm going to make the curly arrow now to show the movement of electrons from cn to c that curly arrow shows this lone pair is going from cn to c simultaneously this bond is being broken and these electrons are going to br so from there they go to br because this bond is being formed and this bond is being broken at the same time and the transition state made this bond was half formed and this bond is half broken to make the five bond complex but they don't have space for that so we just do this and now once we've done this what's given off after the cn is being replaced with the br br is being given off and it has a lone pair additional lone pair because one electron from here both sorry both electrons from here go to br so that's why you get a lone pair here so that's the whole reaction mechanism all right now i'll zoom out to the whole question again then it says here give the name of that reaction in uh, reaction number three we've already mentioned that reaction number three is reduction but we'll do that later in the next chapter reaction number four and reaction number five were NaOH. so the reagents for reaction number four and reaction number five were NaOH. in reaction number four they were NaOH dissolved in uh ethanol no NaOH aqueous because if you go up and actually we've done that part so i don't know why i'm writing it but because let's just look at fill how the answer is filled so this is any which aqueous and this is any which in ethanol four is aqueous five is ethanol so scrolling back down four is aqueous and the conditions are heat under reflux and in reaction number five the conditions may you got to put the ethanol also so you can say that the any which is dissolved in ethanol or you can say ethanolic solution heat under reflux if you want to be little more efficient with your words at any which in ethanol and heat under reflux but you can also say ethanolic solution and heat under reflux okay then it says here that under appropriate conditions ethanol and propanoic acid undergo condensation reaction now this part is being done in the next chapter because this functional group is an alcohol and that functional group is a carboxylic acid and alcohols and acids react to make and this is something that you done in o levels they react to make esters. So the condition for this reaction is concentrated H2SO4 as a catalyst, and you gotta heat it. And in that we'll do this later, but it should not. I mean, we'll do this later in the next chapter. I don't expect you to be able to answer this part right now, but because it's here, let's answer it. Uh, alcohol plus acid makes ester. You need sulfuric acid and heat. And when when ethanol and propanoic acid react the compound is ethyl propanoate now the, i'll draw it on the right hand side before i draw the actual skeletal this is propanoic acid ch3 ch2 co oh and it's this oh that is lost and replaced by the alcohol ethanol so let me erase the oh and put the ethanols o and this is what we'll discuss later don't worry about it and I'm doing this here because if you're revising this later, you know how to draw this. But the chapter has not been done yet. So if we have to make this part, we skeletal. So the yellow part is one, two, three carbons. Then an O. 
and the third carbon has a double bond O, and then the two carbon uh, alcohol. Yeah. And this O, by the way, comes from the alcohol. So I should actually make this green, not yellow, because the green was the atoms from alcohol. And that's okay. And this product's name, by the way, is what, what, what? Ethyl propanoate. Okay. So I guess, but this part, part D, is on esters. We'll discuss it later. Now, part E is fun because this is about. Uh, the oxidation, mild and strong oxidation of what you may call it, uh, an alkene. So it says here that we reacts with KMnO4 cold and dilute. This tells me, because this by the way is a reaction that you'll see in alcohols also, in carbonyls also. So that couldn't just have told me what V is, but because it says cold dilute, I know that only reacts with alkenes. And it says that it decolorizes bromine water. So that Anything that decolorizes bromine water must have a carbon-carbon double bond. So V must be an alkene. And it's saying here that V reacts with propanoic, uh, hot corn, PNO4. Only propanoic acid is formed. The only product. So there are two ways that there are two separate uh, structures that will result in propanoic acid of V. And we'll draw both and then figure out which one is it. But the answer is here, right here, in which one. Because both will give a different product with cold dilute KMnO4. And here, the one they want with T is the one in which it has two chiral centers, okay? So let's look at V. Now, what, what organic compound, when heated with sulfuric uh, conch, uh, KMnO4, will give me only propanoic acid? So let's draw that guy. Now, for this to be understood, you really have to understand the alkene 6 video, the one with strong oxidation of alkenes. Because what we had done, and I'm going to move on to the side, so I need some space. So in that video, we had discussed how uh, to break the carbon-carbon double bonds using uh, considered KMnO4. And depending on what we had on the other guys, when the bond broke, if this was another R group, you would make a, a ketone. But if this had an H, it would make an acid. So that's what we did pehle. If you want to understand this further, I suggest please watch Alkene's video 6 in detail. I've already shared that with all of you. Now, so what happens is if you want a three carbon acid as the final product, which is CH3, CH2, CO2H, if you want this as the final product, you need to realize that it can happen. One of two different molecules will make that. When, when this breaks off, this is what your mind should be thinking. When this breaks off, both parts would give the same thing or one part give this, gives this and the other part gives carbon dioxide and water because they're saying this is the only organic product. They're not saying this is the only product. They're saying this is the only organic product. So there are two different alkenes that will give me this as the only organic product. One is if this is the product made by both branches when they are split open, because this will split open if you add conch KMnO4. It will split open into this part being a separate molecule and this part being a separate molecule. And if they're identical groups, whatever molecules they make will be identical and that'll be the same molecule. Let's say that'll be this. The other option is that one group has uh, R, C, O, for example, this. And if you have this kind of layout, then this part becomes, this is a terminal carbon, a double bond. So this part breaks off when you slice it open with KMnO4 and this part becomes CO2 and H2O. And the left molecule, the left side, be becomes an acid because it has a C with an H. One of the Cs in the double bond has an H, that becomes an acid. So this can, that acid can be this one. So that's one option. The other option is that both of them were identical, but both of them I'm putting Hs here because you want an acid. If you wanted a ketone, these two would also be R groups, but you want an acid, so they have to be Hs to get the OH. So that's the case, and when these break up, they both make identical acids. Now, the next part is, well, how many carbons in the acid? Here, there are three, so this must have two other carbons because this is the third one. So the two options here that would be the molecule that will give me propanoic acid would be CH3, CH2, double bonded to C with a CH2, CH3. Okay, don't worry if I'm making the cis isomer of the trans, both will make the same thing. When this slices up by using hot KMnO4, the left one becomes CH3, CH2, C, double bond O, and the H really becomes OH. And the right guy also is CH2, CH3, 
C double bond O and so the H only you get an OH and when you look at these two they're identical there are one two three carbon acids one two three carbon acid so this is also propanoic acid and this is also propanoic acid so if one of the options that gives me the alkene is CH3 CH2 CH double bond CH single bond CH2 CH3 so this is a rough structure of what this is this is one two one, two, three, four, five, six. This is hex one, two, three. Hex three will give me this and this. A six carbon broken in the middle gives me two, three carbon identical acids. Now this is option number one. The other option is, and I'll move on the side and I'll keep this here. The other option is that if your alkene was something like this, CH3, CH2, CH, double bonded to CH and an H. Now, this, when this slice is open, and I hope I can move this around, when this slice is open, okay, from the double bond, what you get is the left guy becomes CO2 and H2O. So we don't care about that. The right guy, sorry. And the left becomes CH3, CH2, CO, OH. And this is a carboxylic acid. That's the three carbon carboxylic acid we need. So this is the other alkene that can do this for us. So I'll move this down and make the other alkene on top. So there are two possible alkenes. One of them is CH3, CH2, CH double bond, CH2. So either a four carbon alkene or a six carbon alkene. The four carbon may, the three carbons on one side become the acid and the terminal carbon with the double bond becomes CO2. So these two both will give me propanoic acid. But the question said, where is the question? Sorry, the question said right here that this is the question. The question said that we is going to be giving propanoic acid, but when it makes T with cold KMnO4, the T has two cardinal centers. So let's make T now with both of the alkenes. So let me go back to the alkenes. These are the alkenes. Let them make T. So now I'm going to make the alkenes again because I need their space. So I need clean space. So this is the first alkene. Isko bhi hum banayenge T and the second alkene ko bhi hum T banayenge. CH3, CH2, CH double bond, CH2. Meaning if I add cold dilute KMnO4 to both of them, I want to make the product. In that case, the left one becomes, and I'll just write this down. So just bear with me for a minute. Uh, CH2, CH3. The double bond breaks and you get an OH here and an OH here. And then you check, well, how many of them are cardinal centers? Clearly, CH3s and CH2s cannot be. CH3s and CH2s cannot be. This guy is an H and OH. Two carbons here and three carbons here. So this is a cardinal center. That's one. Then go to this one. H, OH. Two carbons on the right-hand side and three carbons on the left-hand side. So this is also a cardinal center. So I got my two cardinal centers. So without even trying the next one, I know this is the answer. That this must be V. But that's not the case. Let's, let, that is the case, sorry. But let's also do the same thing here. And let's see what happens when I put cold dilute KMnO4 here. So when I do that, it also makes a diol. But the difference is that it won't make two cardinal centers because I'll put the OH here. And I'm putting the OH here. But this has a cardinal center right here. But this isn't a cardinal center. And why? Because it's got two H's. This isn't. This is, this isn't, this isn't. So how many chiral centers do I have in this case? One chiral center. So that tells me this was not the alkene I'm looking for, but this is. Scroll over, let's scroll over to the question to see what they're asking for. Let's go back here. Okay, so now I've got V and I've got T. V was the six carbon acid, CH3, CH2, CH double bond, CH single bond, CH2 single bond, CH3. So I will write this as CH3, CH2, then a CH, double bond CH, CH2, CH3. And when I made a diol, they'll get an OH here and an OH here. So T was CH3, CH2, CH, OH. I know it's a pain writing it again. Trust me, I'm writing it. But I'd rather write it and then not have you assume me carcaro. So I got that. So when I draw the structural formula for this, because that's what they want. CH3, CH2, 
then ch bracket oh because that's a branch now ch another bracket oh then ch2 ch3 all right so let's go to another question that i want to talk about in this case this one is question number seven in the same worksheet what do i have here now i have here one bromobutane reacting with kcn to make p so cn is going to replace the br and that is cn is becoming c double oh so you got four carbons here five carbon cn will come here and a five carbon acid exists right here one and three in the middle and one right there similar to the previous question oh aqueous with heat will replace the bromo with the OH. What you need reaction to would be to eliminate to make an alkene and then alkene can be polymerized. So we can make all of these. Okay, so what would P be first? They want the displayed formula for P. One bromobutane, and let's draw that one first. So one bromobutane would be four carbons and the first carbon is a PR. Or you can draw the first carbon as a PR, uh, the first from the left or the first from the right. I like drawing them to the right, so I wrote there. So when I do that, my BR gets replaced by a CN. So this is one carbon, two carbon, three carbon. And the fourth one, I can either put it on top or on the right. I like on the right, but now if you notice this at CN, so I can't write CN. I have to show the bonds for C and N like that. Because it's a displayed formula, so you got to show the bonds like that. All right. So that's the displayed formula for P. And then this becomes C double OH. And they're asking for reagents for reaction number one and reaction number two, right? So what would the reagent be for reaction number one be? You want to hydrolyze this, so you need dilute HCl and heat under reflux, okay? And that would be what? Heat under reflux uh, to make the acid. Reaction number two would be removing this to make a butene. So you need NaOH in ethanol and heat under reflux okay and polymer q q q q q q is from butene so butuanine so let's make that nature so we've done reaction number one and two key reagents and conditions if they ask you what type of reaction reaction number one was reaction number one was hydrolysis okay and reaction number two is elimination and the one that they haven't given this one is nucleophilic substitution and even this one HCN is also nucleophilic substitution obviously you write the whole word I'm just writing in abbreviations nucleophilic substitution then so they want the structure of the polymer Q to make polymer Q butuanine you need to understand is uh, 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 like that and so I would say that you first draw the monomer in a fashion you can write a polymer for, which is this fashion. So you got a CH2 and a CH3. That's but one in drawn in a fashion which you can polymerize. And polymerize how this bond breaks and a single bond goes in and a single bond goes in. So what you have is the polymer would be CH3, CH2, bonded to carbon here, carbon here, H there, H there, H here and two sticks like this and they want only one repeat unit so that's the answer i've got the repeat unit right there all right then moving on to part b for this question it says here complete the reaction scheme for to show the mechanism for the reaction between one bromobutane and oh now this is also a primary halogenoalkane so the mechanism would be sn2 the transition state one so we've done one already here they've given another one to make r the thing with that is that they've given me more space so here and this is worth a little more marks. This is one more mark than the previous part. So I know I should make the transition state also in this case, okay? So I'll do that. They want the reaction mechanism. So they want all the arrows and all the lone pairs and all that. So I'll, let me zoom in. You know, it'll be nice to zoom in here. So this is my guy. So the O has to have lone pairs, at least one that you draw. The carbon has to have partial negative and partial positive on the partial positive on carbon and partial negative on Br. And in the first stage, the curly arrow from the O's lone pair goes to the carbon. And then you form the intermediate transition state, CH3, CH2, CH2. The way they have drawn it exactly, obviously it can't be exact because you've got to draw the transition state. But the BR starts to break halfway, okay? 
and the OH starts to burn halfway. You can use solid lines or dotted, whichever you prefer. The one of the H's goes here and one is in front of the board, like that. Okay. And this would mean that this would be the transition state. This would have a negative charge. This is the whole thing having a negative charge. Now, I haven't made the bond arrow from here going here because I want to do that in the second step. Because in the first step, this comes in. In the second step, this is being broken right here. So it's not a second step. I'm sorry. Sorry. This is the same step happening simultaneously. But since that's the way they want it, I'll make an arrow from here to BR for the second um, part of the reaction. This is one large step happening. It is starting off from uh, BR, uh, being uh, so the carbon being attacked by the OH. And as this bond forms, this bond starts to break and we show the bond breaking here. And when we do that, the final product would be then, you got the CH3, CH2, CH3, CH2, CH2, bonded to O, or here your OH will come. And the two H's are moved to the other side. Okay, you can draw it like this, or you can draw it the way they have, meaning in the normal, non-shape version. Up to you completely okay and you're going to be giving off what br minus br minus and i'll just scroll over so i can see that also br minus and you're going to make the lone pairs on br minus that's the anion all right so that's the overall mechanism for the reaction okay the oh comes in delta plus delta minus makes the five bond transition state. We have made the relevant dipoles. You put the charges on the transition state and the bromide ions. You put shown the lone pair that's attacking and the, the lone pair that leaves, leaves and you got the curly arrow coming and they got the curly arrow going. So this is the complete reaction mechanism to draw for the exam. Nucleophilic substitution SN2, this one, because it's a primary halogeno alkane. All right? Okay, so that wraps this question up. Moving on. Now, a, a bit a bit left only. What is left is just simply rates of reactions of halogenoalkane. Rates of reactions. Now, halogenoalkanes can rates depend on the kind of halogen they're bonded to. So a halogen they can be bonded to would be F, would be Cl, would be Br, or would be I. And in your slides, there are bond energies given. The G is much by far the strongest at 485 kilojoules. CCL is about 340. CBR is 280 and CI the weakest is 240. Now, first of all, why are the energies, these are by the way, all kilojoules per mole. The reason why they decrease down the group is these guys get bigger. The overlap gets lesser because the bond length is longer. So the bonds become weaker. Now, secondly, the rate at which the reactions happen will determine how easily the bonds are broken. Clearly, the easiest bond to break is the weakest one. So here, the weakest one is I. So iodoalkanes have the fastest reactions if everything else is kept the same. Then bromoalkanes and chloroalkanes. Now, this bond right here is one of the strongest single bonds there is. Most single bonds are weaker than this. So what that does is this makes the bond extremely strong and this bond is actually inert. And fluoroalkanes, fluoroalkanes, that means alkanes with fluorine are really inert. They don't react, they don't do anything. They're the best for us to use if you want inert solvents or inert compounds or anything. Fluoroalkanes, extremely inert. That's why they're even used in things like Teflon, Dacron, you got the CF bonds in PTFE. That's the guy that we studied how to make in alkenes. Now, just to give you an idea, a PTFE a polymer was C, 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 uh, and all the four bonds the carbons had as branches, the two carbons were with Fs. And yes, obviously this was a carbon chain, but the CF bonds were so strong that heating it won't break them because they won't bond with something else. You can't just break a bond, but they have to bond with something else. So generally a bond will break if they can make a stronger bond. This guy is so strong, they can't make a stronger single bond. So this, this doesn't break. That's when this chapter, we never studied fluoroalkane reactions because this bond is so strong. It's always chloroalkanes, bromoalkanes, iodoalkanes are the ones that we're studying because these bonds can at least be broken. And in this case, of all the three, the easiest to break is iodo, then bromo, and then chloro. All right. So fluoroalkanes are not stable. Oh, sorry, fluoroalkanes are very stable. Now, how do we measure the rate of reactions? Now, for this, a good way is to add an to add NaOH or even water for that matter to these guys. Yes, the reaction with water is much slower, but that's what we were figuring out. We're trying to figure out rates. So we add water, we can measure their rate. So we add water to, to these guys and uh, and heat them. 
or even add alkali and heat them, what happens is these guys start to break away. The chlorides, bromides and iodides. And to, take, to check how much have they broken away, what we'll do is we'll use silver nitrate because silver anion, silver cations with halide anions make silver halides and they generally are precipitate. Like a silver chloride precipitate is white, a silver bromide is pale uh, uh, cream and silver iodide is pale yellow. And these are by the way precipitates done in, in group 17 theory and also in your lab theory. So a good way to test these houses out is to take, put them in a test tube and I'll actually show you the diagram right now actually. Let me just scroll over there. So let me scroll down and here's what's happening. You take the, uh, the setup is such that you have a beaker of hot water because you'd never want to heat alkane, uh, sorry, any organic compound directly in a flame because it'll get burn. So you put them in a water bath and the test tube has NaOH and your halogenoalkane. You just putting a little bit of it so that you can see the formation of the precipitate. And then you add nitric acid because to ensure that no other precipitates show up, this will only, therefore, the only silver precipitates show up. And if the halogenoalkene is an uh, iodide, I iodoalkene, you'll have a yellow PPD for silver iodide, cream for bromide, and white for silver chloride. And the idea is that you time it. Time, time, take the time, time it from when you add the silver nitrate to when the precipitates start appearing. And what you realize is that the iodide precipitate, the yellow one, appears first. If you're doing three different three separate experiments. The shortest time taken will be for the iodide to come in, then bromide and then chloride. And the reason for that is that the CI bond is easiest to break. That breaks the fastest with silver nitrate in this reaction. So the precipitate adds the fastest. And then bromide and then iodide. And in fact, you can even use this to test for the identity of the halide in the halogenoalkane by doing this. You have any halogenoalkane, you add NaOH, and then you add silver nitrate followed. Because what you're adding in nitric acid first is to neutralize the NaOH, the excess leftover. So you add that, and then you add nitric acid, and the silver nitrates, uh, sorry, you add nitric acid, and then silver nitrate. And the silver ions will precipitate the halides, and the color will tell you which of the halides you have. And the timing can tell you the rate at which, and that proves to you that the rate will be the slowest for chloride and the fastest for iodide because Ci bond is the easiest to break and the C Cl bond is the, amongst the three, the harder one to break. Having done that, your one more thing left is to understand that to, to, for you to know, there is no reactions you require. There are some reactions I've given for CFC reaction. You can actually ignore those because all you need to know is that this guy, CFCs as a whole group of organic compounds that stand for chloro, fluoro carbons, these guys are going to affect and deplete your ozone layer. And the reason why they do that is because in addition to a fluoroalkane, the CF bond, they also have a CCl bond. Now that's a problem because in this case, the weakest bond that exists is the CCl bond. These bonds are pretty strong. They're in the 400 kilojoules energies, the CH bond and the CF bond. So when they are used in any compound, and if that compound is going to vaporize into air, these guys will not, will not break down through homolytic fission and make free radicals. They won't do that. What happens is this bond right here, this bond is much weaker than these bonds. So in the upper atmosphere, this bond breaks homolytically. And when it breaks homolytically, it ends up making, a, it's a, it makes CL radicals. Now these guys are highly reactive and the radicals actually deplete ozone layer. Deplete the O3 ozone layer. Now your job is to know that that CFCs are dangerous because of the CCL bond, nothing else. The fluoros are perfectly fine. It's the chloro that's a problem because that bond can break easily and form radicals which end up depleting the ozone layer. And that's what you have to know. But fluoroalkanes, if there was only fluorine and no chlorine, they would be perfectly fine. They'd have no issue in space. And so chlorine radicals are the ones that break down and you have this. Now, why won't this be for bromine and iodine? Because they're not a concern for us. They don't rise to the ozone layer. Their bonds are so weak, they are broken down in the lower atmosphere and they never get down to the, they never get up or rise up to the ozone layer. This guy is strong enough to rise up, but then in the higher atmosphere, it breaks down to make radicals, which then depletes the ozone layer. But this fellow, CCF, never breaks. So, anyways, that never hurts the ozone layer. Anyways, so look at some of the uses there on slide number 30, 
8 also please for some of these compounds uses of stuff like uh, PTFE like I said is this is a polymer PVC is a polymer PVC was the polymer you had a chlorine in the compound PTFE I shown you earlier was poly tetrafluoro ethane, uh, uh, ethane, ethane that's the CCF2 CF2 and polymer there's very strong polymer that's why used in non-stick pans. This one is used to make pipes because this Van der Waals are stronger than polyethene. Then you got CFCs are used as refrigerants. In, in still, they use as refrigerants in your air conditions, your, your fridges and all that. Your gas ni bharte the gas that the, these guys fill up. That's a CFC, a freon. Then you also have some uh, solvents. Uh, CCL4 is a good solvent. Okay, CFCs are also still used in some countries as aerosols. Aerosols are basically gaseous solvents. They carry other things along with them. Now, don't know replacements. Hai. Nowadays, most countries don't use CFCs aerosols. They use hydrocarbons as aerosols. And CCL4 ke solvent, ke jaga, they can also use hexane as a solvent. That's a replacement solvent. And aerosols, ke jaga, they can use hydrocarbons. So we also have replacement for CFCs if they were dangerous to us. All right. And if you want a harder plastic and you don't want to use chlorine, then you can use, then you can use polypropene. That's still harder than polyethene. Yo, for halogen alkenes, the chapter is over. And just to remember that the chapter is a great connector between alkenes and alcohols also. It's an important chapter. It has a very uh, famous mechanism, tested quite a few times, nucleophilic substitution. It's the guy that you can remember uh, between it links between alkenes and alkenes also because alkenes can make halogenoalkanes and if you watch the video on alkanes you can realize that even alkanes make halogenoalkanes so you can go from alkanes to halogenoalkanes you can go from alkenes to halogenoalkanes you can go from alkenes to alkanes that reduction hai. then between both of these make alcohols that's a very important next functional group that we're studying because alcohols end up making carbonyls which are aldehydes and ketones they also are making acids and some carbonyls can also make acids and acids and alcohols can make esters so that's your whole family of organic compounds now you can also go back and we've done this reverse reactions may you can convert halogenoalkanes to alkenes you can convert Halogeno uh, alcohols to halogenoalkanes. This reaction we'll be doing in alcohols, alcohols to halogenoalkanes. All right. So this wraps up. I'll see you guys in class. Thanks very much. Bye bye.